Hi there, well, welcome to all of you. My name is Anita Erős, I'm a lawyer, and I've been dealing with IT security for like seven years. Then I was just a, uh, an undergraduate student at the uh, Page uh, Law Faculty, and then I uh, wrote my thesis to the IT department uh, because I thought uh, no one was going to write about uh, IT, so that would be uh, uh, favorably accepted. Therefore, I went to Peter Pop to help me, and then I uh, wrote the thesis, and then I started my uh, legal career in this domain. And this is how I was. Uh, I got in touch with uh, IT security, primarily in case of contracting. Uh, and also my colleagues uh, uh, were on different projects, therefore they went, uh, they came to me with different questions. I was also involved in realizing certain projects and therefore uh, I have a hands-on experience on the legal problems that could come up. Let's just now talk about social engineering, which actually uh, is, becoming, is becoming increasingly uh, important like how to penetrate without unexpected consequences. Why is it important to talk about that? Now, social engineering is, especially for consultants, a very interesting thing because of their daily activities. No, stepping out from their daily activities, uh, they uh, make a very interesting uh, uh, um, scenarios on how they could uh, lay hands on uh, interesting pieces of information. Now, they can also make certain steps, which steps, however, are um, uh, constitute the breach of law. Therefore, we have to be aware when realizing such a project, we have to be aware of uh, what sort of protected areas we may um, uh, enter and what sort of sanctions there could be against us. So how to realize a project in such a way that it would be legal. What are we going to talk about today? First of all, we're, talk we're going to talk about uh, the definition of social engineering so that uh, uh, all of us would speak the same language uh, from now on here in this room. And this presentation is going to be about contract for social engineering, so not about uh, uh, the malicious social engineering when we would like to um, obtain certain advantages for ourselves. Uh, we'll uh, also look at the legal boundaries and uh, we will um, list the techniques used in uh, social engineering and how these techniques could uh, remain within uh, the domain of legality and what sort of uh, 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 laws uh, and uh, legislation are the boundary and then we'll also talk about what we get as a result. So let's first look at the definition. Wikipedia says that, uh, that social engineering is the act of manipulating people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. Now, People Hacking Camp says uh, that social engineering is the art and science of getting people to comply with your wishes. However, how did this become art and science? Now, social engineering became uh, well known by Kevin Whitnick. This is how the whole thing began. Uh, this whole thing began as uh, we know it is always the uh, uh, the best bandits the bandits become uh, the best uh, uh, pilots now this guy was uh, um, arrested then he was in prison uh, for two years and also for two years he was uh, uh, he was not allowed to use internet and then uh, he then established the meeting security consulting so uh, the guy who formerly uh, was Therefore, a, a criminal um, uh, used his experience and activity, uh, his experience to turn that into a, a money-making activity. But once I asked him whether he loved his uh, 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 profession, he said, yes, of course he did. Uh, he said that, yes, we have uh, 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 an activity that could, be, that could constitute uh, a crime, and then uh, we legalize that, and we are also paid. Uh, there are two books. One is The Art of Intrusion and the 
uh, art of delusion. Uh, now, what is uh, the objective of the social engineer? The malicious social engineer tries uh, to get unauthorized access to systems and information uh, or to commit fraud, uh, to try to uh, thief, uh, to try to steal identity and uh, also to disrupt uh, systems or networks. Now, this is what the security advisor uh, or consultant does as well, uh, however, with a different purpose, because we have uh, the good consultants uh, who actually uh, want to show us through these, uh, through, through depicting the loopholes and through depicting the, the security threats um, um, to show us to what extent uh, our um, security system is vulnerable. And if we know the vulnerabilities, we know uh, how to um, act against them and how uh, to eliminate these security shortfalls. As I told you, this presentation is about a contract for social engineering. I'll try to give you a couple of facts and figures. What is important in case of uh, uh, contracts for social engineering, what we have to pay attention to. Now, first of all, it is the contract themselves, the contract itself. The contract is actually um, constituting a bilateral agreement between ourselves and between uh, uh, the consultant company. And uh, through this, the consultant company is authorized uh, to uh, carry out this activity. And this is how an unauthorized or illegal activity becomes uh, legal. What we have to make sure of is uh, that we need to uh, double check uh, the uh, authorization to, to sign for the company, that is the proxy holding, because um, in given uh, cases, eventually, we might be carrying out uh, things that are otherwise illegal. And if the contract is not signed by the person authorized to sign for the company, then obviously uh, that um, uh, statement or waiver is not uh, valid. Now, what is the most, uh, the simple, uh, the simplest way to uh, check the signature? We ask for a specimen signature and uh, also a uh, an extract of uh, um, uh, list of uh, companies, and uh, we try to have the contract signed by the party uh, that, or the person that is nominated therein. Uh, this is a technicality. However, uh, the description, whether well, the description of the task is uh, within the subject of the. Uh, agreement or it is rather annexed to the agreement. This is just a technicality. Anyway, we need to uh, put down what uh, uh, the what we are going to do, what the steps and uh, uh, and methods and modalities, tools and means of this activity are going to be, who is going to participate, uh, what sort of uh, uh, spaces we might enter, and if uh, the customer also wants this, uh, certain um, exclusions or certain uh, limitations could be uh, um, used, like the customer may ask me not to enter certain rooms, certain spaces, uh, or uh, the uh, checkup should not be carried out in certain intervals, and then all of these limitations uh, could be put in here. We know that contracting uh, is uh, prior to uh, starting the audit, and we know that life keeps changing. Therefore, it might very well happen that our uh, scenario uh, changes as well. So we enter, the, conclude the agreement, and then we start the project, we start the audit, and then certain things and events uh, occur uh, which uh, either uh, change or modify uh, things that had been uh, written down in the contract. Uh, therefore, it is uh, quite useful uh, to Make a uh, to make to keep the project up to date and to have a uh, project manager, uh, which project manager can keep the project up to date and can always have uh, the necessary um, approval of the customer in order to carry on with the, the new phases of the uh, project or the phases of the modified project. In case of social engineering audits, uh, there are certain tasks and uh, certain steps. Like for example, we go around in a certain um, um, business 
center, not a business center, but a, a, an office building. And then uh, we are walk, just walking around uh, looking for uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, and then uh, it also happens that uh, the information is known, the contract is known by the uh, CEO, uh, the general manager, known by the uh, uh, CIO, uh, but not necessarily known by the security guard. Uh, therefore, it is uh, worthwhile keeping with you, while car carrying out the audit, uh, keeping with you a statement assigned by the customer, uh, which statement says, uh, which statement says that you're uh, legally carrying out this activity and then that uh, you could be released in case uh, they, uh, the security guard uh, gets you. Now, due to these things, also a POC is important, a POC who is always um, available should there be any problem in the course of the audit, uh, should we uh, face difficult situations, then uh, the POC, the point of contact, could be uh, phoned, could be contacted, and uh, uh, that person can help us in such difficult situations. It is also worthwhile to have uh, uh, to have a uh, another con uh, substitute for this person uh, should that person not be available. There are legally protected interests that we must uh, observe, despite having uh, authorization to perform the task. Let me name just a couple of these areas that shall not be transgressed because that would go against the law. One is business secrets, protected by a uh, civil code, uh, improper market behavior, etc. cover this area. Uh, disclosing business secrets, uh, unauthorized disclosure, use. Uh, or a, uh, of, of business secrets is prohibited by law. This usually is not a problem with social engineering investigations because if our contract includes a confidentiality agreement, a confidentiality clause, then uh, the uh, then then we are authorized to access business secrets. Ob ob obviously, we are not to disclose them. But if the uh, Customer does not provide, uh, does not allow access to these to this information. Then we should be very careful about what we ex gain access to. Uh, law protects also the uh, facilities uh, of the uh, party. So if we are not allowed to enter a space explicitly, then we should not enter there. This covers sites, offices, parts of offices like a server room. Let's say the customer does not want us to enter the server room, then we should not do so. However, if we are allowed to do that, then uh, uh, the contract should state that we uh, may access any and all locations of that site. Privacy, uh, usual is usually a problem. When we design our method methods for the for the task, we should take that into account. When we think about what we are going to do, we should then think of uh, how uh, of, of whether we use personal data and if we do how much. Do we need to get uh, permits for using these data, or sh whether we should, uh, or, or or we should or we should solve the task without having to access personal data? Then uh, logo usage is also protected by uh, trademark law. Good goodwill. I don't know how many of you do that, such investigations, but it's always very important to observe the uh, the l laws and regulations currently in force, because I may uh, uh, browse laws about my planned activity on the internet, but I'll probably I, I may hit on a copy that is a year old and not in force anymore. 
and also it's very important that you consider the uh, laws and regulations of, uh, of the given country you're operating in. What I'm talking about is Hungarian law, but if, we, if you're asked to go abroad to another country and do the work there, then you should get informed about the laws and regulations of that specific country and the newest level. What happens if we, despite all of this I just said, we do cross legal borders? First of all, civil law has sanctions against this. One is uh, uh, damages, where you, where it, the a proof for the uh, relationship between damage and the actions we did must be shown, and obviously. Uh, there may be criminal, uh, criminal law consequences. This young man like th that you see in the picture, you see that he's detained, uh, so he does not work on IT security for a while. On, in the following, I'll uh, discuss the various sanctions specifically for a couple of things. Uh, there are remedies issued by other legal regulations, like uh, like contacting the ombudsman, uh, the economic, uh, the office for economic competition in Hungary, for business competition in Hungary. So let's have a look at the uh, various techniques. One being piggybacking. Piggybacking is the social engineering uh, method where you. join a group and with them together enter a space that requires uh, authorization. I, you join the group like workers or office uh, staff and thus avoid or bypass this uh, entrance checking. For instance, you may not anymore uh, work with the with a specific company, but the security guard does not know this. And since I'm a nice young girl and he knows me, uh, I can say sorry. I left my, uh, my 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 card at home, but I need to go in. So could you please allow me in? And he will. In this case and similar cases, there are no nothing that is against the laws. It's the security guard not. Uh, observing security regulations, but one, going one step further, I may, st I may forge uh, uh, entrance cards, taking a, taking a sheet of paper, colored pencils, and uh, draw logos and whatever I want and uh, create a designer card that would allow me to get in. If I do enter that space using that card, this is then the forgery of a private document in Hungarian, under Hungarian law. And if you use uh, 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 a private document that is forged or contains in, um, invalid data or, or not uh, untrue data uh, to access a space or do something, then you are subject to punishment. I'm actually trying to prove my right to enter a space I'm not really authorized to enter, and this is a and this this I do using a false document. In cases like this, when you want to use this method, you are advised to ask for a an, a card that is the that is our customer's card that he will activate. Obviously, if he didn't activate it, I could enter any space I want where that card is needed, then no search engineering would be required. So I get an inactivated entry card. So I'm not using a, a forged document. It is a real document provided by the customer. Acquiring information or information gathering. This is the essence why search engineering is done. Uh, trying to piece together separate 
bits of data compiled into a system that the that you can then use to get access to other confidential doc information. Information gathering could be done, for instance, by going to the uh, customer and passing myself off as a university student. I say that I'm writing my uh, my my thesis. And I'd like to ask a couple of questions from people working there. Since people are very nice, uh, studies are always supported by people, universities, what a, what a, nice, what, what a nice girl, uh, why not help her? So it may happen that, we, that, that, that they give us important and confidential bits of information they should not disclose to third parties. What in, this, in these cases, So the question is whether you have cheated with this. Well, in Hungarian law, is it is when you uh, lead somebody to believe something in order to get to, to gain uh, uh, illegal uh, profits. But obviously, you don't have a, an illegal. You don't want to get illegal profit. You have a co contract with the customer. And if you get money for what you are doing, then this is why you will get the money, because you have been hired to do exactly what you are doing. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can avoid causing damage. So this is not illegal under Hungarian law. However, uh, a problem may be uh, when I use the personal data of somebody, uh, if I pass myself off as some existing other person who has not authorized me to use his or her data for the purpose of impersonating him or her. If you use that method or use your own personal, uh, then you should use your own personal data or personal data of a non existing person and compile a persona from these uh, non existent personal details. Another technique can be when you phone in to the help desk or to customer service or to accounting and you pass yourself off as somebody else. You impersonate, for instance, uh, the boss of the person who is sitting there uh, and the person is very afraid of the boss but would like to, do, to, 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 do, to, to comply with the boss's requirements and do his or her work well. So that person may divulge to me confidential information based on this false belief. Uh, Hungarian law says that if you transgress uh, uh, privacy laws for gaining Ill uh, illegal profit, uh, uh, as liable to uh, to up to one year prison. So the important thing is for uh, for you to use the data of non-existent persons, or if you do pass yourself off as some existent person, like the boss that you mentioned before, or like the IT uh, security manager. then you should have that authorization on you when you do it. Because otherwise, data protection law, uh, you will be liable to, to, to uh, punishment under data protection law. Or another method, you can send in a questionnaire, or you can do that also via the phone. You phone in to. You say, excuse me, I'm from this and this organization. I'd just like to uh, check our customer data. Uh, uh, the other end uh, fills in all the, all, all, all the data. Uh, what the hacker can here do is to uh, hide one or two uh, questions requesting uh, confidential information among a lot of other questions that are totally public data. 
in this case, if our customer does not authorize us to gain access to any and all of his business secrets, but instead says that you can only access Uh, accounting information, uh, information. So during a social engineering uh, investigation or that you are performing, you should only gain access to accounting information. In this case, you, your your permission or or authorization is limited, and when you do, in this case, use this uh, questionnaire method, only ask questions about things that you are authorized to get in possession of. Otherwise, you will transgress against the law prohibiting access to business secrets in order to gain illegal profits or to cause somebody else uh, uh, material damage, financial damage. And persons who are said to be subject to this law are subject to up to three years uh, prison. Another method is to enter an office space and check the laptops, pen drives, servers in the office and check if I can take them out of the building together with the information stored on them. In this case, if this method has been approved by the customer and you do have a statement confirming this, then he can say, the customer can say that what I have in my, uh, uh, what I have in my offices you can take with you. But once you're inside, an employee May you, you you may find that an employee may be using that equipment for personal uses instead of official uses and has his or her own personal uh, laptop on the desk and you pick and while you are picking up stuff to take out of the company you you will also pick up a personally owned laptop and the owner will not be happy and we may you doing this uh, actually be doing stealing. Obviously, uh, our intent to illegally acquire is important. Obviously, uh, we can say in this case that we are doing a security audit and this is part of it. So to, in order to avoid such misunderstandings, it is better to not take these objects out of the office. Instead, you could put a sticker on them and photograph it, and the sticker says, I could have picked this up and taken it out of the office. And you can then attach these photos to, to your audit report. Access to the company's network. This has also multiple, there are many ways to do this. For instance, you can find a, uh, conference room where you can connect your computer and access the company network, but you could also uh, get into the company, a uh, get a pen drive into the company that you somehow connect or have connected to the, to a computer to, to access the network. When you uh, discuss your scenario with the customer, then you should uh, remark that you are going to use this method and but he may not be happy about you collecting his or the company's accounting data uh, or having a look at the uh, at the invoices so the customer may not be wanting to you to do this and he may say okay you can connect to the com uh, net to my network if you can prove it, that is enough. So in this case, you should not do more than required. Otherwise, uh, you will transgress a law 
specifically criminal code section 300C. So you should not exceed the limits of your access authorization. Otherwise, you're uh, uh, subject to prison, to imprisonment of up to one year. So when you, in this case, and uh, connect to the company network, then the only thing that you should report is that you have, in fact, been able to connect to the company network. Do not start groping around on the network, collecting data, and God beware, changing them. So these uh, are the couple of techniques I think are the most frequently used ones in social engineering. We see that, or you, I hope you could see that we are m moving along a very narrow uh, uh, border between legal and illegal. So you have to first uh, uh, study the legislation in force for these activities, decide on what you are going to use, uh, uh, prepare properly for the task, and if you do prepare properly, then you can perform the task without uh, transgressing any legislation. What will this, what will be the result? Everybody will be very happy, there will be joy and a warm fuzzy feeling, plus you can be, you can submit an audit that is legally okay, is effective, is well documentable and reportable, and you won't run into unexpected nasty consequences. So in, if you do all this properly, then you will be moving around in a safe zone. You will be performing a safe audit, uh, remaining within the boundaries of the law, and obviously help the company improve company security or ID security because If we can map the vulnerabilities, the social vulnerabilities of the company, then we can uh, provide, offer and provide uh, security awareness training, security control uh, policies that will then help the company improve its security. Thank you.